Good morning, kids, and welcome to Children's Church. I'm so glad that you could join me through your computer or phone or TV or however you're watching this. Uh, I'm very excited to be with you today. It is May 31st, which um, really isn't that great a day to celebrate. I guess uh, Friday for a lot of you was the last day of school, so we can celebrate that. We can celebrate that for sure. I know my kids were excited and they had virtual awards days and uh, next week I know you still gotta like, go drive through a line and turn in Chromebooks or packets of work that you've been uh, been doing and I hope that you have been keeping up with your schoolwork. Um, but anyway, yeah, so we can celebrate the end of the school year, but today is actually a big celebration in the church. Not just agreeable multicultural, but the whole church around the world today is celebrating a special day called Pentecost. Now, you just watched a video on this uh, where it explained what Pentecost was and what happened on that uh, first, well, I guess, Christian Pentecost. Pentecost had been a Jewish festival where people would gather in Jerusalem and they would worship God and they would celebrate uh, harvest and things like that, but they would uh, they would have a they would all gather in Jerusalem and celebrate and have a good time. Well, then on the Pentecost that you watch, it actually happened 50 days after Easter. Is why we celebrate it then. Uh, so Jesus at Easter, well on Good Friday he died, and then on Easter he was raised back to life, and then for 40 days he was with his closest friends, who we would call the apostles now, his disciples, and he was with them and he taught them and he explained to them what he wanted them to do and how they should move forward as a group of people. And uh, he told them that they need to go out and tell everybody about him just in, in Jerusalem and Judea and in Samaria, which was a neighboring country where their enemies were, but Jesus wanted him to love them as well and then to the ends of the earth, everywhere. Basically, we're supposed to tell everybody everywhere about Jesus, is what he was saying. And so uh, he says that, and then right before their eyes, he just kind of floats up into heaven, in a way. That would have been really cool to see, and it kind of would have freaked me out, I think, if I had seen it, if, I was, if I'm honest. Um, but they go, and they go back to Jerusalem, and they're there for 10 days. So there's 40 days Jesus is alive and with them, and then 10 more days, and it gets to 50, and we celebrate Pentecost, which is when Jesus had gone up to heaven, and then he sends the Holy Spirit down. And so the disciples are together, as they were supposed to be, and they're praying, uh, and all of a sudden they hear this sound. It's like this crazy and loud wind that comes in and just kind of blowing through the place where they're at. And all of a sudden, these, uh, these, what they describe as like tongues of fire come to rest on them. And these guys start speaking all kinds of different languages. Now that would be awesome. I wish that I could speak a lot of different languages. I wish I could speak uh, one other language besides English really well. That would be nice. Uh, so they just start speaking these languages and they're telling people about Jesus. Well, there were people all from all over the world that had traveled Jerusalem for this festival, and they start hearing the disciples talk, and they're like, hey, these guys are all from Galilee. How do they know these languages that, were, that they're speaking? There's no way. And Peter explains to them and says, this is what the prophet Amos predicted, is that like this was going to happen, and this is what uh, God wants to happen today, and we've been filled with the Holy Spirit, it has come finally, and is here, the Holy Spirit is in us, and it's giving us this ability to do this, special gifts that, that, that we have to speak this other, these other languages, and the people start listening, and Peter gets up and he preaches this sermon. And he's telling them all about Jesus. And they say, oh. And they, they're cut in their heart, it says. Like, they, they just, they're just like, oh, I know we need to do something, but we don't, we don't know what to do. So he said, well, Peter, what should we do? And Peter says two things. Repent and get baptized. So a lot of them thought it was a good idea. Do you remember from the video how many people thought it was a good idea? I'm going to listen. No. Nope. 
higher. No, 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 not, not that high lower. <laughs> yeah, yep, that's right. 3,000 people. That's a lot of people. 3,000 people decided they wanted to follow Jesus and they got baptized that day. And because of the Holy Spirit coming and because more of these people are joining in what the, we now call the church, we kind of celebrate Pentecost as a holiday. Uh, not like the Pentecost that they used to celebrate, but it's kind of like the birthday of the church. So I have a piece of birthday cake here. It's not really birthday cake. Cora made it. It looks like birthday cake. She made it tonight, coincidentally. It's confetti cake. I thought it was really good, and uh, I wanted another piece, but I didn't want to eat in front of my family. So I guess they're going to find out in the morning when they watch this video. But it was kind of like the birthday for the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit came there, but it was really like the birthday for the church. The church was born on this day, and we see what happens when all these people commit their lives to Jesus. When all these people commit... I think this is one of those trick candles. It is. It's one of those trick candles that Errol picked up at a, for a birthday party for somebody here. So we're going to like put that out with a fork maybe. Stay out. There we go. And now I can eat. And so, hmm, maybe you can have some birthday cake at your house. I'm not delivering it, but maybe you got a cake mix and you can make some at home. That's really good. I'm going to finish my story though. So, um, so the people, they start forming this church. And the church, whew, this thing's still going. Um, <laughs> the church started doing a lot of things. They were really devoted to praying together, which is really good. They took communion together, which is good because it was the way, of, the way they remembered what Jesus had done for them. They spend time in fellowship where they're together and they're talking, but it's not just like friendship. Fellowship is something different. F fellowship is like friendship with other people who believe in Jesus and you're like talking about Jesus and praying for one another and spurring each other on. And then um, what was the last thing? Uh, oh, <laughs> the apostles' teaching. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. So like they were learning what the Bible tells us. Uh, they were committed to that. And these people started being radically changed and they were stopped being selfish and they started sharing all their stuff with one another and they were performing miracles. And every single day, people all around them saw what they were doing, they heard what they were doing and they said, I wanna be part of that group of people. So my challenge for you today, kids, is this, that you would love people so well that they would know that it is Jesus who is loving them through you. That you would love people and be so generous and sharing and so kind with your, with your things and with who you are and that you would tell people about Jesus and that because of that, because of the way that you love people, they would know that God loves them too. Because that's really what Pentecost is about is about Jesus sending the Holy Spirit to fill us so that we can be empowered to love people so that they could know that God loves them. So that's my challenge for you today. I hope that you are able to get some birthday cake uh, today or sometime soon. Um, I'm going to finish my piece right after we pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for this time together. Thank you for these beautiful children who are watching this video, I pray that you would help us all to know how to love people uh, the best way that we can. That uh, we would be kind to people and not mean that we would be generous and not selfish, that we would share with others, that we would encourage people and not say mean things to them. Lord, just may we become people who are known for loving uh, their neighbors and their friends and everybody we come in contact with, so that you can be known. In Jesus' name, amen. Whew, this cake is really good. Mm. Oh, I forgot to turn off the video. Sorry, kids. Have a good day. Pastor Matt, Pastor Emily, 
the whole Miller family, we love you. Um, Ilsia says hello. She loves you. We hope to see you soon. Bye.